let the people of God say amen. amen. Let the people of God say thank you, Jesus. The psalmist David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mind. Oh, magnify the Lord with me this morning. He's brought you from a mighty long way. Oh, magnify the Lord with me this morning. He woke you up in your right mind. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Anybody want to magnify the Lord with me this morning? You can praise him. You can magnify him wherever you are. That's why the psalmist David says, uh, Behold, bless ye the Lord, uh, all ye servants, uh, who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands uh, in the sanctuary and, and bless the Lord wherever you are this morning. You can still bless the Lord. Uh, if you're going through dark valleys, you can still bless the Lord. If, if things seem to fall apart, you can still Bless the Lord because God has never left you. David went through a lot of stuff. Yet still he continued to bless the Lord because he knew God has never left him. That's why I stopped by to tell you, you ought to bless the Lord in the morning. You ought to bless the Lord in the noonday. You, you, you ought to bless the Lord in the, in the midnight hour. Come on, church, lift up your hands and, and just bless the Lord this morning. Just bless the Lord. He's been good to you. Bless the Lord this morning. He's brought you from a mighty long way. Just bless the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. To the presence of the Holy Spirit. To my pastor, the Reverend Charles T. Assembly, for the opportunity to stand behind this sacred days to preach thus said the Lord. To our first lady in her absence, to members of the clergy, to my wife, to the officers and members of this great church we call Union Better, Hear Me Church, to this wonderful choir, give God some praise for them. <laughs> to our visitors and friends in the sanctuary, and all those who are online, I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and and Savior Jesus the Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have come this morning to, to praise and, and glorify your holy name. We have come not in our own name, but in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, let your Holy Spirit descend and, and take full control of your servant, that your world will go forth and not void. Let me decrease and you increase. Not my will, but that will be done. Bless us as we walk on life's rocket road. And it's in your name we pray. And the people of God say, amen. amen. Today is a great day for all of us. Because the Lord has spared our lives to see another day. To worship him in the beauty of holiness. To be able to get right with him. This is another opportunity. Some of us have come for various reasons best known to ourselves. Some of us because we have survived the sting of death. And that is why today is a great day. And we have come to give him the praise. If you have the Bible, please turn with me to Joshua. Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. I'll be reading verses 13 to 15. Joshua in the Old Testament book. Joshua 24 verses 13 to 15. And it reads, And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which you built not, and you dwell in them, of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted, not do ye eat. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away gods which your father served on the other side of the floor and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. 
And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. What are the gods we shall father serve that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell? But as for me and my house, as for me and my house, as for me and my house, as for me and my house. Somebody say, as for me. In my house, we will serve the Lord. And I shall use as a subject this morning, going above and beyond. The message the Lord has laid on my heart. According to our scripture, just read Joshua has just completed the exodus, the movement of God's people. That started under Moses. He is approaching the end of his life. And once again, the people are tempted to follow false gods and pagans' religion. So he gathers all the tribes to remind them of the goodness of God. They were given a land which they did not work. They live in cities they did not build. They enjoy the fruit of the vineyards and they did not plant. So Joshua challenges them with life's great choice. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. The gods on the other side or the God of your father. Remember, Joshua was a military commander. He was accustomed to giving orders and having people respond immediately. But in this passage of scripture, he is not making a request that the people can accept or reject. He is giving an order. They have no choice but to choose. They must decide. Jesus emphasized the necessity of this choice in Matthew 6, verse 24, when he said, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Jesus said, he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathers not with me Scatters abroad. That's what my Bible tells me in Matthew 12, 10. It is a decision, a choice you must make. You cannot choose to be a law abiding citizen and a criminal at the same time. You cannot choose to be married and single at the same time. You cannot choose to accept Jesus Christ and reject him at the same time. You cannot be for God and against him, choose ye this day whom you will serve. And so Joshua, as the captain of the host of Israel, could not command his army to serve God. He could not enact legislation forcing people to honor God, but he could govern the land by the principle of righteousness. He could lead his army as a good soldier of the Lord. But in the final analysis, they will each have to decide for themselves if they were to serve the law or not. The same applies to us. Every person is responsible for his or her own decision. Every person must make a decision concerning Christ. But the idea of individual responsibility is not very popular. Nine days. Folks blame the society. They blame the inactivity of the church. They blame the breakdown of the family. You can blame whoever you want to. But when you stand before God, it will not be the society he condemns. Huh? It will not be the family huh? he condemns. Huh? 
It will not be the church he condemns. We will answer for our sin. We need to understand that the choices we make will either break us or make us. And so Joshua found himself telling the people of Israel not to forget what God has done for them. Unfortunately, some folks do forget what others have done for them. And so Joshua was aware that much of Israel was not serving the one and true God, but foreign gods as well. They had departed from the original covenant and the Ten Commandments and were seeking to compensate for what they thought was lacking. They were trying to find fulfillment in other things. And Joshua told them they had to make a choice. They won walls that they didn't have to lift a sword. They walk around Jericho and the walls fell. He brought them out of the bondage from Egypt. He gave them cities they did not build. He gave them vineyards they did not plant. Israel had to make a choice because God has gone above and beyond for them. Some of us find ourselves in similar situation. We ask God for a house. He gave us a home. We ask God for a friend. He gave us a wife. We ask God for a part-time job. He gave us a full-time job. So I stop by to ask you this morning, are you willing to go above and beyond for God? As Christians, we need to understand that there are times we need to make a choice to go above and beyond. Sometimes things are truly worth having if we go above and beyond the call of duty. If you go with me, in Genesis chapter 24, Abraham's servant met Rebekah at the well and asked her for a drink. After drinking, she said to the servant, I will draw water for your camels as well. Rebecca was willing to go above and beyond. It was unexpected, but she did it anyhow. She didn't have to do it, but she made a choice to do so. Now, we need to understand that a camel will drink between 20 and 30 gallons of water each. But she had committed herself to help a total stranger. How many of us who have committed ourselves in that fashion? Some of us want to do the least that expected and get the maximum benefit. Some folks will say, that person is working so hard and trying to make us look bad. Who they think they are doing that extra work. But I stop by to tell you, some folks want to go the extra mile because God took them from nowhere to somewhere. Some folks found themselves bound by the chains of death and was broken by God. And so they made a choice not only to serve the living God, but to go above and beyond for God. And as Christians, we need to understand that when we take the first step, God will take the second step for us. God will give us the strength and power to go the extra mile. Just like Rebecca, God's spirit would help us do things just a little better and a little bit longer. But I hear someone asking the question, but how should the above and beyond principle work in our lives? Well, I'm glad you ask. But the first thing is that we should not live our lives by the measuring rod. If we are living a life that is always measuring, we are missing what God told us what to do. Some folks will say, that didn't help me when I was down and out. I'm not going to help them. If we do exactly what we are supposed to do and nothing more, we have not demonstrated that Jesus is in us. If Jesus had done only what he should have done, 
he would have never made it to the cross. But thank God, he did. Some folks want to do great things for God without ever trying to do the little things. We must do a good job with what we have before we can do great things. Extra blessings come from extra effort. If a husband and wife are willing to walk the extra mile or go above and beyond, divorced lawyers will see a huge decrease in their business. So I stop by to tell you, if we are willing to go above and beyond, God will open the windows of heaven and pour out his blessing upon us. We have a choice to make. We need to choose wisely because we are living and dying with the choices we have made. When we choose to give our service to the church, we need to go above and beyond, including other things that we are moved by the Holy Spirit to do. That's what God wants us to do. We need to reach out to a brother or sister in need. We, we need to get out of our comfort zone and and be a blessing to someone. God has brought you from a mighty long way. You didn't get there all by yourself. Sometimes we forget that it was God who brought us through, just like the people of Israel. Sometimes we forget the promise we made lying on our sick bed, just like the people of Israel. Sometimes we Forget that it was God who put food on our table, just like the people of Israel. Sometimes we forget it was God who took us through our Red Sea, just like the people of Israel. Joshua told them, choose ye this day whom you shall serve. But as for me in my house, as for me in my house, we we serve the Lord. Go tell your neighbors, huh, just like Joshua asked for me huh, in my house, huh, we will serve the Lord. Huh. You know what God has done for you. Huh. You know what God is doing for you. Go tell your neighbors, huh, just like Joshua, huh, I may be up, huh, I may be down, huh, but as for me, huh, in my house, uh, we will serve the Lord. Uh, go tell your neighbors, uh, just like Joshua. Uh, I know the road is rough uh, and the going uh, gets tough. Uh, but as for me, uh, in my house, uh, we will serve the Lord. Go tell your neighbors, uh, just like Joshua. Uh, I may be walking uh, through the valley uh, of the shadow uh, of that hub. Uh, but as for me, huh, in my house, huh, we will serve the Lord. Huh. Folks will talk about me, say everything about me. I don't care. Huh. But as for me, huh, in my house, huh, we will serve the Lord. Huh. I don't know what you're going to do this morning, huh, but I stop by to tell you, serve the Lord huh, with gladness. Huh. God will bless you. Huh. God will open her. Huh, the windows uh, of heaven uh, and pour down, uh, pour down, uh, pour down, uh, pour down, uh, pour down uh, his blessing, uh, his blessing uh, upon you. I know sometimes we get heartaches uh, and headaches. Uh, I know sometimes we get broken hearted. Uh, I know sometimes we feel God is so far away. Uh, but I want you to know huh, that God has never left you, huh, that God will never leave you. Don't let the devil huh, stop you from doing huh, what God wants you to do. God wants us, huh, God wants you huh, to go above and beyond for him. And the question I want to ask this morning, are you willing? You have a choice to make. God bless you. God make his face huh, to shine upon you. God be gracious unto you and lift up his countenance upon you. In Jesus' name, in the church say, amen.